Hello, everybody. Welcome to this focus session about filmmaking between the Nordics and France. Uh, we have a group of experts here for you today uh, to give you lots of information and some practical tips as well. My name is Wendy Mitchell. I'm a journalist and film festival consultant. I'll be your moderator today. Uh, I'm so thrilled to be uh, working with this seminar that's organized by Film France with some of the Nordic Film Commissions. So we're going to have a little bit of a big picture, then we're going to do some case studies, and then we might get into a little bit more detail at the end with some of the funders. Um, for our overviews, I'm going to first hand over to Lizalette Forsman, who is from the Nordisk Film and TV Fund. So over to you, Lizalette. Thank you, and thank you for this great opportunity to reflect on building more bridges between the Nordic region and France. So as Wendy said, I, wor I work for something called Nordisk Film Octave Fund. That's the official name and it translates to Nordic Film and TV Fund. And I have to start with uh, explaining why Nordic is so important here. Uh, often at different international events, we hear the word Scandinavian used, but for us Nordics, Scandinavian means uh, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, and sometimes only Sweden and Norway, if you talk from a geographical point of view. So we, the Nordic, Nordic Film and TV Fund, we are here to help strengthen the Nordic industry in all five Nordic countries. Uh, and what do we then do? Well, first of all, we gather a lot of very uh, diverse partners under sort of one roof. We have 22 partners, uh, the most important being our founding partner, which is the Nord Nordic uh, Council of Ministers. We top finance films, documentaries, series, but we need to have a Nordic majority producer and we need to have one of our members involved in the production or let's say as a partner in the production. And also, we need minimum distribution in two Nordic countries. Well, today, because we have so long traditions of co-working, we very often get applications that start off with five countries involved, five Nordic countries. When we look back at the stories that connect us, in the Nordics, it's very important that we have never had this sort of uh, Nordic soap. We always look at the story that touches us, and travels makes our heart tick for this story. Uh, we don't need to have a lot of players in the other Nordic countries. I don't know if this is because we share history. We have shared kings and queens. And, 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 and by, by the, the way, way, there is also a French, French connection to our royals. You might know that in the 17th century, Queen Christina introduced French as the court language. And you might know that the royal family of Sweden of today actually has a French ancestor who is Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte. So we also share some royal history with France. But today we are of course looking at the modern stories. Well, what is there to say about our societies today? And I'm sure you are all familiar with the Nordic principle of having double stories, having the plot, but also saying something deeper about our society. That's very much what we look for. So when we, uh, when we give support, when we top finance productions, we look both at the distribution, primarily at the Nordic one, and secondarily at an international one. And there is, that's where we hope you will come in. Uh, what makes Nordic attractive as a region is also that, that we have this stable uh, market. We are, we are very creative, we are professional and we are effective in producing. This unites us. For me, France, and for, for I think most cineasts in Finland, uh, France has always been it's equivalent with European film culture. So I think there, there are many good meetings for us in, in the future. We, you, even in, I, I talk from Finland, from Helsinki, and you know, Ake Kaurismäki has chosen to make some of his best films in France, and he's always been inspired by the French movies. My, the first French sentence I learned was, C'est vraiment dégueulasse from Godard's Au Bois de Souffle. Today, my sons are very interested in the French secret service. 
thanks to Le Bureau de Legende. And as kids, the favorite program was BBS SME. So uh, I feel that there is a strong connection also on a content side be between the Nordics and, and the French. Uh, there are very many great collaborations ahead of us. And I also uh, am aware of that, that at these hot global markets, the French film festivals, animation festivals, and now also during the last five years, serious festivals are important meeting places for all, all of us. Unfortunately, we can't meet at any of these this autumn in person, but I hope to see you there or maybe at the table around a shared project. Merci et au revoir. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Liz Alot, and for bringing history alive. I didn't know some of those connections. That's great to know. Uh, we're now going to hear from Mathieu Fournay from the CNC, who's going mm -hmm. to tell us a little bit more about the French side of things. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Liz Lott. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so yes, we have a common royalty, maybe. I, I think in Denmark as well, we, we also have a, so, some kind of um, connections. Um, it's very important for me to be here today because I have to say that if France is the natural home for co-production and if the country is extremely involved in international co-productions, we are maybe a bit behind what could be done in terms of film and audiovisual industry uh, with the Nordic countries and not only Scandinavia, uh, but also so Iceland um, or Finland. So you have many ways of cooperating with France as an international uh, producers. You can either go towards the co-production side, and I think this is what's going to be a part of the case studies that, that you will um, speak with later on, Wendy. Um, and you can also look into filming in France and benefiting from our tax rebate uh, that has a nickname uh, in France, C2Z, uh, which is a very competitive uh, tax rebates. Regarding co-production, we, we have many schemes that are open to any international project uh, and the most well-known of them is Aide au Cinéma du Monde, which you can translate as World Cinema Help, but we usually keep the name in French. Um, and I have to say that looking at um, Nordic countries, we can do much better. So that's why I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be talking to Nordic producers, Nordic film institutions, uh, because this fund that has been helping at least 400 long feature films in the past uh, eight years, it was created in, in 2012, only uh, three projects came from Norway and only four from Sweden and none from Finland or Denmark or Iceland. So as you can see, we can do much better. For France, despite the COVID crisis, co-production co remains at uh, the heart of our international um, policies and what we believe is extremely important in terms of international financing uh, for the film industry. And we are also developing programs, international programs, in the writing of TV series uh, because we want to address the international audience. And we have partnership with Germany, Italy, Israel, Canada, and we are looking into uh, building up uh, writing residences in the U.S. Uh, regarding TV series. So as you can see, France is definitely open to international cooperation, international co production. France has a great tax rebate system, beautiful locations. Um, so I believe there are many, many ways uh, to work uh, with you and with all of the Nordic countries. Thank you, Mathieu. It's great to hear that there is more potential, that there's already a great foundation of France being so open to all this international work, but can, yeah, hopefully room to expand some of the, the Nordic collaborations, especially. Thank you for that. Um, I wanted to mention to our audience that you won't see everybody on screen in front of you, but we have some of the film commissioners um, here with you behind the scenes today. So if you have questions, um, even as we're talking about something else, feel free to write some questions in the chat and they will respond to you. And of course, we'll be able to continue discussions after this session. 
Um, our next part of this webinar is uh, some case studies. We're going to look at three different projects. The first one is More Than Ever, and we're going to have Xenia Mango from Oviv in France uh, and her Norwegian co-producer, who is Ragna Midgard from Merfilm in Norway. Xenia, do you want to start by telling us a little bit about this, this film and why you needed a Norwegian co-producer? Uh, it's a long story between uh, France and Norway. It's a girl who's uh, living in Paris with her husband. We understand that she has a rare lung disease. She's living in Bordeaux because we're going to shoot in Bordeaux. And then um, she feels uh, difficult there and she wants to, to go out of that. And she meets someone in Norway by, by a blog on the internet and a guy called Mister. This person um, follows life and talks about life and, and death and is quite uh, funny, cynical and he lives in the front of the, the, the fjords. He gives beautiful photographs uh, of the fjords and she decided to, to go there without her husband and to do by her own her first trip alone, even with this lung disease. And it, it will be the, begin, the beginning of a new uh, breath for her and, uh, and the beginning of a new cho choice of her life. So that's why we, we decided to very, very soon from the very, very beginning to, to find a Norwegian co-producer. And uh, I should say that uh, Merfilm and uh, Ragna and Maria were, were with me from, and with Emily because they knew Emily uh, already and her work for a long time. So we, we are all together, all women working together to, to make this film happen. And we have uh, Liv Woolman will be with us. Why did Mirafilm want to work on the project? And you know, do you think there are differences in the way of, of working in France versus the way of working in Norway? How, what have you discovered so far? So far. So this, I think, is a really good script and also a very talented director. So that's also what we first look at. And of course, that is really connected to Norway in a very natural way. In order to get some funding from Norway, you really need to get some points in with, um, with how to contribute to the story. And the team is really talented and Senja has a really big heart for the project. So all these things are really things that we like when we see the, the film. And um, this is Merkrim's first French uh, co-production. We're shooting next year in the summer or in the spring. So we're looking forward to finding out more about the differences. But I think for now, it's that Norwegian crews are, I think, a bit smaller. Mm. But that could also be a good thing than international crews. And we're used to filling different roles or big more roles, basically. Xenia, I know you haven't shot yet, but what have you learned about working with Norway in particular so far? I think we, um, we learned that we, have, uh, we can work from the very, very beginning and from the development. For me, it was a wonderful experience. I, I, for, the, for instance, we were writing with Emilie and we were stuck a little bit in the, in the writing. We were uh, looking for new uh, experiences and... Uh, and so then Ragna and Maria told us, okay, then you, perhaps you can, uh, you can come and, and make some uh, pre rixi uh, in, uh, in Norway, in the region of Bergen. And uh, thanks to, uh, to Sigmund uh, from the Bergen Film Commission, we, we had the possibility to come and uh, they financed us uh, a part of it. And we could say definitely that it will be there, that we're gonna shoot there. And, um, and then the, we, we began a very long, um, a very long development uh, on that with that. And for us, it was very helpful. And from now I know that uh, I'm, I have a long, uh, I'm very confident with Ragna and uh, I, feel, uh, I feel very at home. Thank you, Xenia. Thank you, Ragna. Um, yeah, I think one, really important lesson that they brought up is, you know, find your correct partner early, you know, develop with them. Um, that's really good advice. So thank you. Um, our next case study is Red Swamp. So I'd like to invite Anthony, Mark, and Nicola. Hi. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. So um, Anthony, this project is originating with you. Can you tell us, because you're a, a UK producer, as I, I think I'm correct. So how are yeah. you getting so international? You're forgetting Brexit, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, well, um, it's, it 
Yes, it did um, start in the UK, but it was myself and a Finnish co-writer um, who were working on the actual series. And because I was working on it with her, um, that led me to go to Finland, to Helsinki, to see for myself um, what the country was like. So I went there and um, through another producing contact, um, I was introduced to Mark. Um, and we, we, we started talking about um, this project and how it could, you know, potentially work together. It's about um, an, an Afro-French special um, service officer, a secret service officer, who takes his estranged daughter to, um, to um, Finland um, as, a, as a means to try and make up for all the time that he spent away from her. So they go on a trip with a bunch of other French tourists um, into the swamps in Finland and um, they actually start getting um, attacked one by one by a serial killer who has unfrozen uh, because of um, global warming. So basically it's, um, it's an eco thriller about survival and in many ways the actual um, serial killer is ourselves. So I think that that was something which um, that's something which definitely interested me from the start. But then when I went to Finland and had a look around and saw the way in which um, the Finns approach um, production and Mark as well, who I really I got on with from the beginning, and um, I thought that this is something that we could work on. Um, you mentioned Brexit, which is an interesting concept. Um, I was looking to do this long before Brexit to work with European partners because. I actually really, really like the European culture and tradition of filmmaking and, um, you know, um, television as well. I always have. So, it brings it, who knows, but I see myself as remaining European as a producer and working with these wonderful people that I'm working with on this project. Yeah, it's <laughs> great to see UK producers expanding their borders. And this sounds obviously like a very organic storytelling opportunity. It's not one of those forced... Euro puddings. Uh, Mark, um, why did Bufo want to, to get involved with this project? First of all, contact wise, we have a natural connection. I, I met with Anthony here in Helsinki. We got connected, and uh, personally, I like genre, sound, genre series, films, so I, I was immediately attached. I wanted to be a part. And are you, I mean, how much are you helping already? Are, are you guys looking at locations already? What stage is it? Is it at? Well, uh, one of the, the another writer is from Finland and content wise we, we have the locations here in Finland it's kind of like I don't say part of Finland is the swamp area but we have a lot of swamps here especially in the north and the locations are beautiful and especially the autumn season is, is great to shoot the it's it's I would say that it's something special great it already sounds special and Nicola Soderlund is joining us from Echo Rights in Sweden and Nicola how, how are you involved already no, I, 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 we have a range of development projects with, with Anthony, and this is one, one of the first. And I really love the concept from the beginning. As Mark said, you know, the setting is amazing. You know, these beautiful colors and the swamp. Can you imagine the fog there, these groups of, of, of French tourists walking there and being attacked? I think it's a very, very good um, uh, start of, 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 uh, of the series. So I, I really loved it. And then uh, my... My assignment, my, my, what we will do is to help them to finance the project, to find the partners in France, to find the broadcasters in, in, in the Nordics. And we are in very, very well, uh, very uh, deep discussions with one who is very interested, extremely interested, and he's not yet signed, but it's, it's about to be. And um, so, and to, to set up the co-production, that's our, our role. And I think it's very, um, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to see how the French, how open they've become the law over the last years and very interested in doing these, all these kind of co-productions. And I think France, when it, also when it comes to formats, for instance, they are very, they adapt a lot of formats in France. I think probably the country in Europe where they adapt more, most formats of all. And it, it, it is a sign of how open they are to the rest of the world. 
which I think is really, really interesting. And, and together with the Finns who have increased the quality of their production over the last years, I think significantly, I think the Finnish productions are really nice, good looking production value now. And also as the cost of production is so low, I think it's a very interesting combination actually these two. So, so um, it came about as a very natural thing to be, for us to be interested in. I think it's a great project. Great. We didn't even pay you to say all those nice things about um, all the French no. and the Nordics, but no, no, but it's, it's but it is, it is actually what I re I really believe that, and I think yeah. it's 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 very very interesting times for, mm -hmm. from that perspective. Yes. Oh. And Anthony, um, when do you hope that the project could actually shoot? And yeah, have you learned anything yet about working with the Nordics? Yeah, I think um, they. I've spent quite a lot of time in the presence of people from the Nordic region. Um, a lot of the commissioners have sort of seen me hanging around some trade events and I've been in conversation for quite a long time with them. I think they're very serious people and I think once they um, get their mind around doing something, they'll, they will do it. And I think another really, really important thing is to, to, to talk about the connections between the countries as well, because we've also been looking at having a Swedish co-producer um, board the project just to give us a little bit more in terms of the financing angle. Great. Well, good luck. That sounds wonderful. And yeah, I think that's an important point you make that, you know, these Nordic countries, a lot of them co-produce with each other all the time um, because they sort of have to because it's never enough, you know, getting, unless you're making something very tiny to just get your local funder. Um, so yeah, that's an important lesson as well. And yeah, wonderful to see how you're setting this up and good luck. We've got Charles Gilibert, um, who's the producer of Bergman Island. This is the Me and Hanson Love uh, new film. Oh gosh, we can't wait to see this. Um, and you know, it says it right there in the title. Uh, Bergman Island, that's Faro in Sweden. Um, you know, did you ever, did you always know you would need to partner with Sweden? Did you ever consider shooting it in some island somewhere else and faking that it was Sweden? Or how, how did this all come together? Um, well, uh, you know, Mia and Sen Love is really inspired by uh, what she went through and real stories. And she wanted to talk about the, this couple of authors working in a, in a place which is very, very inspiring. Uh, so we, she heard about um, Foreux and uh, the Bergman Foundation inviting authors to, to, to work there. So we went there together and it, it became uh, super clear uh, the first day that the, the island would be one of the characters of, of the story. Uh, and that um, we, 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 we had to shoot there whatever. Uh, so it became a production constraint uh, for me and an inspiration for, for Mia. And had you ever shot anything in Sweden or had she? Uh, no, it was the first time actually. Yeah. And, you know, I think you've gotten the best Swedish co-producer. You've got Platform Production, which is um, Eric Hemendorf and Ruben Oslund's company. They do such amazing films. Um, how, how did you, did you look at lots of companies before you sort of decided to work with them? Uh, yes, actually, we met a few people. Um, I'm, um, you know, we, uh, co-producer is so important to me when it becomes difficult or uh, because um, at a point they, uh, they are the interlocutor of the, of the author you work with. Uh, and, uh, and it's far and we know how it's different in every country, the way uh, to, 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 to work. And uh, so um, I, I was really looking for a producer more than a co-producer in a way. And, um, and the meeting with Eric was, um, was, was amazing. And it, um, I, I came in Stockholm with uh, Mia. So they, they had the chance to meet and Mia was really happy. So after you know, all this process, uh, we, um, we, we, uh, we decided that we wanted to work together. Yeah. And what was it like actually shooting on, on Faro? Did the Bergman Institute help you? 
Yeah, I mean, the Bergman Institute was very important. Uh, the, uh, you know, M Mia has written during two years on the island. Mm -hmm. uh, she wrote the script there. So uh, she was invited by the Institute that she had the chance to have access to all those places and people telling the story of the island and of those different places. So, I mean, they were real partners. Um, I mean, the difficulty is more that um, there are a lot of people on the island summertime and the story had to happen summertime. Uh, Faro is a very little island. Uh, so at the point you're, um, uh, uh, sometimes, you know, people from the island need to, to manage uh, your presence, uh, you know, uh, the, so, but in the same time we met with um, very, uh, with great people, uh, it's just that, I mean, to be very concrete, it becomes super expensive just uh, because nobody needs you, you know, uh, so it was, it was difficult. There are good crews all around because I used to work mainly on TV projects, uh, but um, uh, but here again on the Gotland, uh, there are all those big events happening. So you ju you just have to deal with this. Uh, you, you, there's a kind of competition with other events. Hmm. Uh, that that that's, that's the, the the difficulty. Yeah. And have you, would you have any advice for anybody who's thinking of, of shooting in Sweden? Is it a much different shooting style or crew style or did it feel quite normal to you? No, I mean, um, I think it's, kind of, so it's, there's not that much financing, honestly, if you compare with other countries because there is no tax credit. Uh, so we've been uh, out by uh, the Fimpie Gotland uh, and SFI, but uh, if, Again, if you compare with other countries, it's pretty little. Uh, and uh, you have to start pretty early, uh, just uh, because it's slightly different as when you mm. whenever uh, out of your country. Uh, so early, good producer. And again, uh, it's uh, you really have to think of your financing plan because it's not that easy to find uh, money if you compare with other European countries. Yeah. And the film is in post now, or how how's it? In three years yeah. now, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's it's in post, uh, so I'm I'm sure we'll uh, we'll be we'll see it uh, first semester uh, twenty one. You know. Great. I look forward to yeah things getting back to normal, so we can watch great films like that. So thank you for for talking a little bit about your experience in Sweden, and congrats to you and Mia. Now going to talk a little more specifically to some of the funders and these are some of the specific regional funders in most cases um yeah it, once you start investigating where you might shoot you might find that there are you know dozens of, of the nordic and the french regional funders as well not just the national bodies um so i would love to welcome here we have uh stefan martinet from uh paris and ile de france we have Natalie Bremont from Nouvelle Aquitaine, um, ALCA. We have Helen Olsen from the Swedish Film Institute. She's also their commissioner for international co-productions and their national representative for your image. And last but not least, Magnus Thomason from the Zephyr Regional Fund in Norway. Uh, welcome to you all. Um, can we just get a, a very short summary for this audience who, who might be looking at co-productions between France and, and the Nordics or someone looking to come shoot, uh, an international producer looking to come shoot in your area. Can I start with you, Stefan? As you all know, Paris region has been a hub for film and TV production for more than 130 years now because filming was invented in France. Most venues are fully prepared to welcome shootings and our technicians and filming companies are more than used welcoming international projects. As the promoters of uh, Paris region throughout the world, eager to boost the activity of production and shooting in our region, we incited our regional council to establish a film fund for international co-productions granted the French partners would remain minority ones. This program has been introduced last March 2020 by Valérie Pécresse, our president of the Regional Council. 
The Paris Region Film Fund for International Minority Productions is calculated by applying a rate of 50% to the expenditure made in the Paris Region, granted you spend a minimum of 100,000 euros. The maximum spent taken in account is 500,000 euros. Therefore, the aid is oscillating between 50,000 and 250,000 euros. It is paid in the form of a grant. This program is designed to help co-produce works between one or several French or European producers. Thank you, You're Stefan. Um, I would love to come to Natalie next. And I think you've already been involved in More Than Ever. We are giving a subsidy to More Than Ever and we're very excited about the project. Yeah, the Nouvelle Aquitaine is the region that goes from the border of Spain up north to the border of Chateau de la Loire. It's the biggest region in France now, and it has the size of Austria. And yeah, you can find any kind of location there, apart from the Eiffel Tower, maybe. But yeah, it's the number two region after Paris in terms of cinema industry. It provides a wide range of working services for cinema and TV industries. We support creation and production through our funds, our regional film commission, artists in residence programs, partnerships with labs and international film markets and distribution of films within the region through an art house cinema network. And the new Aquitaine offers an ecosystem of cinema industry and talent working on an international level. Uh, we welcome the last Wes Anderson movie last year and the last Ridley Scott as well. Um, we have a specific fund for international co-production where you can partner up with one of our local producer and shoot movie totally elsewhere in the world, as long as you do some local expenses in hiring crew or doing post-production. And it applies to every genre, animation, feature film, documentaries, and from script writing through development and production, and you can combine the three uh, subsidies. Uh, we are actually the first region to settle this um, international production. We did that a few years ago. Uh, with such amounts and you can find more details with figures in the brochure which is linked with this panel uh, and because we have local councils that can come on top of that the production funds can go higher than 200,000 euros and you basically have to spend a hundred percent of um, the subsidy in on our territory Helen we're going to come to you next and you have to tell us all of Sweden not just a region um, is there a Swedish Film Institute co-production fund or minority co-production funding? Definitely. First of all, thank you so much for inviting us. Uh, we really uh, love being part of this discussion and focus. And talking about regions, I brought you uh, our special wooden horse from my grandmother. Uh, just to give you some Swedish feeling. But of course, we most of all want to be international and we do support co-production. So we did bring an international friend <laughs> and let's show us the money. You always want to know how many money do you have at the Swedish Film Institute? So here's what we have for next year. 1.1 million euros a year. And that is for the fiction side. And here you can see our deadlines for next year. Three deadlines. And you apply through your Swedish co-producer. So you just find the best co-producer and you're so welcome with your application. Bienvenue. Um, so I think, yeah, in the chat, Helen will be around and maybe some colleagues. Um, but yeah, let's go um, also to Magnus to tell us a little bit about Zafir. My name is Magnus Thomasson. I'm the CEO and attorney at law at Medifon Zafir which is uh, the regional fund for the southern and western parts of Norway. We have offices both in the city of Bergen and Stavanger, um, and we're, um, yeah, we pretty much cover most of the southern parts of Norway outside Oslo, and we're also the region with the most beautiful fjords and mountains, scenically speaking. Um, our company offers both public funding and soft grant, uh, in terms of soft grants and private equity investments. Uh, for uh, audiovisual productions such as feature films, documentaries, TV series, computer games, and virtual reality productions. The company's investment fund holds approximately 4.5 million in private equity and provides top financing investments. 
to four to eight films a year. Um, this fund is sourced by our uh, municipal owners, but also private investors. The investment fund uh, has an average uh, uh, annual return of about 4%, which we were quite proud of uh, on its investments. That is actual return of, of about 4%, uh, which I believe is placing us among one of the most success successful private public uh, commercial film investment funds in Europe. Uh, further, further, we uh, receive approximately 1.5 million euros from the Norwegian national government for audiovisual production and activity in the regions. Uh, and such funds are submitted as non-recoupable grants that everyone loves to high quality productions with uh, significant regional expenditure. So that's the short introduction of Sophia. Please go to sophia.no for further details. Great. And have you ever worked with any films that have had any French component in them yet? Any French co-productions? We did um, give some funding to Senior and Oranga's film, and we're really looking forward to see how that goes. Great. Thank you so much, everybody. I wanted to ask just one final question, is if you think we can see more natural collaborations between the Nordics and France, and how we can encourage them. Helen, do you have an answer to that? Well, not a, an answer maybe, but, but we really hope and we really see that, that the, there are more and more collaborations. And I mean, there are these long term, of course, with the France having this festival, uh, great history of great festivals, uh, both for documentaries and shorts, and of course, the uh, Creme um, de la Creme with the Croisette. But uh, we see also the finance, financial structures, like with Arte, is very important and, and also the audience wise. We see really both ways, uh, Swedish films traveling and, and of course the fantastic French movies, uh, our Swedish audience love it at, as well. So I think it's both on the artistic side and also the crew. I mean, our Swedish crew gets also benefit for all this input and output deals. So I think it's, it's just um, something we hope we can do more of these collaborations. And for example, for a couple of years, we have a great collaboration with Lazar. And I mean, I know there are some, like two Swedish projects for the co-production village now in January in Paris. So watch out for the Swedes. Uh, and the, the other way as well, we have Swedish producers there that are looking for French co-producers. So I think this is the way to get to know each other and really share the passion of love for film together. Thank you, Helen. That's a great point, about, especially about all of those French markets that the, the Nordics goes to. And, and yeah, hopefully, you know, there's some great markets in the Nordics, Gothenburg and Haugesund, and we see French people attending those, hopefully looking for projects as well. Um, Natalie, did, did you have any, any hopes for, for more Nordic co-productions yes. in France? I have more than hopes, actually, because we have a Danish animation studio Sun Creature with Settling in Bordeaux and they have a few people already there and it will, there will be around 50 people at the beginning of next year so it's going to be a lot of I think a production project and they are already applying to our funds because they you know they're based in Bordeaux now. So. Great and Magnus it, you sound very open to lots of international work. But I just want you to um, restate something you mentioned earlier on Wendy that I think is pretty important and try not only not only to co-produce but also co-develop that makes the co-production so much more dynamic in a way and 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 by such more uh, accessible and feasible to fund like ours. Yeah, really smart tip. Um, and Stefan? Uh, I see a great opportunity uh, for uh, all these uh, countries to, to come together, uh, especially since we are trying to uh, uh, focus on uh, alternatives to uh, love and tenderness. Uh, uh, and uh, we try to uh, promote the fact that uh, Paris can be also a uh, very uh, dynamic uh, place for action movies. I would really love to thank all of our speakers today who've told us some great information that's very useful, I think. Also quite inspiring to see how people are working across borders, especially this year and, and in 2021. Um, so thank you to all of our speakers. Um, thanks to Film France and the film commissions across the Nordics who have organized today's talks. Thank you, the audience, for joining us here. And I hope you found some information that's very 
useful for you to set up your next films in the Nordics or in France, um, please do reach out to these commissions. They've got so much more information and people waiting there to offer you more specific bespoke advice for your, your own films and TV series. So thanks again for joining us and good luck with your films.